Cannon beam on attacks. Where Garuruman's Digivolution sequence, Sora's determination, and Garudamon's shadow wing. These are the headlines coming out of this week's episode of Digimon titled Garudamon of the Crimson Wing. So let's look at the good, the bad, and the straight up ugly from this week's episode of Digimon Adventure 2020. Let's start off with the good. At the start of the episode, we have Matt, Sora, Joe flying on Birdramon. We then see a Digimon called Fun Beemon getting captured by the Waspmon, who also have that dark miasma coming out of their bodies. And as they are completing their task, we see a giant looming shadow cast over Sora, Matt and Joe. We then see the villain of the episode, Cannon Beemon. Fun fact guys, Fun Beemon is the rookie being captured by its champion form, Waspmon, who then is working for his ultimate form, Cannon Beemon. Cannon Beemon is massive. He makes Birdramon look like an ant in comparison. Cannon Beemon by himself is a one man, or should I say one mon army, just by the sheer size of this killer bumblebee. Sora gets Birdramon to try and stop Cannon Beemon from capturing the Fun Beemon. Birdramon uses her Meteor Wing! To free some of the fun Beemon, Cannon Beemon launches some missiles of its own and these missiles are massive, they're as big as Birdramon. But then we'd had our very own Gabumon using his Petty Fire attack. Guys, on a side note, I really like the name of Gabumon's attack in the original, the Blue Blaster attack. I prefer that name over Petty Fire, but that's just me. Whilst they're all getting chased into the jungle by that one missile, Joe has been airsick all day and he falls from Birdramon. And we have Gomamon jumping in and trying to save Joe, meaning Sora and Matt are alone again. The difference between these three and the trio of Tai, Mimi and Izzy is that the other three genuinely feel more like a team. Izzy is the brains coming up with a plan or telling them where to go. Tai is the one spearheading the plan and taking charge when things get tough. And Mimi is the heart of the group and making them laugh and making sure everyone is okay. It's a good balance with those three characters. Whilst here, and I know at the end of this episode, the chemistry between this group increases a lot more between each other, but I feel for me, this group it's mainly focusing on the build up for Matt and Sora to becoming even more close. Even in episode 11 it was Sora and Matt fighting in a power struggle when it comes to the decision on whether or not they should just leave or save the Neoman. Sora and Matt were arguing and Joe never had a say, he was just there in the background. That's why I personally prefer the other team over this team because there are three characters in that other team whilst here you forget that there are three characters because you're so focused on the two characters out of the three. Sora and Matt run into one of the Fun Beemon who escaped. The Fun Beemon explains that the Waspmon are capturing the Fun Beemon to make them soldiers for a Cannon Beemon. Sora is the one who started the conversation with the Fun Beemon. She made this Digimon comfortable enough to open up and tell the situation. And even at the start of the episode, Sora was trying to save the Fun Beemon and even made Birdramon fight the massive monster that is Cannon Beemon. This is a more proactive Sora. I really like this version of her. She's the mother figure of the Digidestined team, but I feel she is the mother figure of the digital world. Every Digimon she meets, she looks at them and tries to get them to open up and talk to her, like how a big sister or a mom would do if they see their younger sibling or child having a mental struggle. She was like that in the original season, but here we see her having a fire within her. She doesn't take orders, she does what she wants and what she feels is necessary. She will even argue and stand up her ground against characters like Matt if she feels she is in the right, whilst before she would let some someone else take charge and be a follower. But here she is more of a leader and a fighter which was missing from her character previously. We see our buddy Joe getting captured by the Waspmon and being transported to Cannon Beemon. We then see Ty and his group finding a place across the mountains. We get a call back to the original season when Izzy's laptop wasn't working. Ty and Argumon would always say to Izzy that he should let them give the laptop a whack to get it up and running again. It's nice to see them carrying on that running joke here as well in the new 2020 series. The signal is shit so Izzy doesn't know what's going on back home in Tokyo. Maybe Devimon is the one responsible for the signal failure. Who knows? Back to the jungle, we have Petty Fire and Magical Fire. 
<laughs> Freeing some of the fun Behemoth from Wasman. One of the scenes I really loved in this episode, and it really shows the fearless nature of both Matt and Sora, is that whilst Wasman was attacking Bioman and Gabumon, and both of the partner Digimon were overwhelmed by their attacks and were taking cover, Matt and Sora stepped in and protected them. I really loved this scene, it was short but it showed how brave the team is and that it's not always the Digimon looking after the humans, the humans also have to play their part into looking after the Digimon as well. They fake getting captured so they can enter Cannon Beamon to save Joe and the rest of the fun Beamon. We then see Garuruman's Digivolution sequence to where Garuruman. I loved this. At the very start of the sequence we hear a wolf howling. That was my complaint last time that we never heard a wolf howl. Well it seems now someone in Toei is definitely watching my reviews because we got a howl in the Digivolution sequence. Once you hear a wolf howling at the start, you see Garuruman's silhouette with his eyes being the colour of the moon and basically representing the moon. This then triggers the evolution sequence. This was such a nice touch because we have the myth of the werewolf when a man looks into the moon and he then becomes the werewolf. Well you had Garuruman's eyes turn into the moon which then triggers him into becoming Were Garurumon. So I liked what they did there. It's little deals like that that makes it special. We have the blue lightning from the Crystal Friendship literally transforming Garurumon into Were Garurumon, adding the jeans, the knuckle duster, and all the other accessories that Were Garurumon usually has. The blue lightning in this sequence could be a reference to Raidromon when Vmon used the Digi Ego Friendship to armor Digivolve into Raidromon. And Raidromon's attacks were blue lightning, so that could be a fun little reference to Digimon of a Cho too. Were Garurumon power hours through the Wasmon. They find Joe but they need to escape so where Garurumon punches a hole through Cannon Beamon for them to escape. Sora then decides to go back to save Fun Beamon and Matt calls out Sora that she wanted to do this. She then smiles in appreciation that Matt is also joining her to save them. She is slowly changing Matt as well to having more empathy for the Digimon. Ikakuman is attacking the Wasmon where Garurumon and Matt are gathering all the captured Fun Beamon whilst Birdromon is waiting to get them all out. The chemistry between the three is getting better. In terms of action, these three have the chemistry on point. But when there is no danger or when there is no fighting needed to be done, I feel the chemistry between the three then is lacking. And I know they need to build Sora and Matt but you can do that whilst also having Joe being more of an integral part of the group as well. Hopefully this does improve in the future episodes. Cannon Beamon unleashed cannon fire that destroyed a mountain in half. That could have been an attack made from a Dragon Ball Z character. Look at the damage this created. That's a nuke right there. Sora's determination to protect the innocent Digimon she meets is building up over a few episodes. It was building up last time with the Neoman and it's building up here with the Fun Beamon. With the payoff to that determination and empathy for these innocent Digimon is Garudomon. I feel the build up in episode 11 and in this episode earned Garudomon to appear in this episode. It didn't feel forced at all. I think this was solid because Sora has been consistent with her love for the innocent Digimon and it's well deserved that her Digimon can digivolve into her ultimate form. Garudamon is epic, punching through the missiles as if they're pieces of paper. Garudamon's shadow wing and Cannon Beamon's red cannon fire had a Dragon Ball Z like beam struggle. That struggle turned the whole world into the color red when both Digimon unleashed their monster attacks. Garudamon then blitzes through Cannon Beamon, saving the rest of the fun Beamon as we see Cannon Beamon's head fall due to the power of Garudamon. I thought that scene was really funny. Matt is in complete shock. He's stunned. He doesn't know what to say. I think the Sora and Matt ship was out there. I think you guys are going to be very excited to where this leads between the two characters. I mean look at Matt, he's stunned, he's lost for words, he doesn't know what to say now. Because that's how epic Sora was in this episode. The episode ends with Ty and his team entering the Grand Canyons. Now let's go over the bat. I thought finally we're seeing Bedroma's Digivolution sequence but nope. We see an orange screen with a bit of fire in the background. I'm not surprised at this point but I was hoping we'd get an epic sequence with Garudamon. I mean Lilymon last week got a sequence so surely Garudamon will also get a sequence right? Nope we don't see any sequence. 
we just see Bergemon in data form getting bigger and transforming into Garudamon. These are the only bad points and they weren't bad enough to reach the ugly portion of my review, so I'll give them that at least. Anyway, this episode was still good, but it wasn't as good as last week's episode. But it was still good nonetheless. Anyway guys, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with our content, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, care for nothing.